academics have been censored on YouTube uh, for talking about YouTube censorship, if you can believe it. <laughs> uh in October of 2020, there was a critical media literacy conference. Let me let me make sure I have the name of the conference correct. Uh, the, it's called the Critical Media Literacy Conference of the Americas 2020. It took it took place over two days in October of 2020. They recorded these a bunch of these panels specifically talking about uh, critical media literacy and how to criticize the media and listen to what you know you know listen to the, listen to the propaganda. Um, and one of the sponsors of it was Project Censored. You guys might recognize Project Censored from my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and from uh, Lee Camp's Redacted Tonight, because Mickey Huff has been on both of our shows. Uh, and uh, Mickey is a, a an absolute delight uh, of, a, of a human being. I, uh, he is fantastic and just such a wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to media literacy and media criticism, which is incredibly important uh, for us today in our times, right? So uh, basically what ended up happening was without any warning, a bunch like their entire catalog of videos from this uh, this conference disappeared. Just gone. Blink of an eye, it's gone. So here's what Mickey Huff has to say about that, right? This is this is the paragraph here. Uh, he says, at first, I thought it was a joke. My initial reaction was, that's absurd. There must have been a mistake or an accident, or it must have gotten swept under somehow. There's no violation. There was no reason. There was no warning. There was no explanation. There was, n there was no nothing. The entire channel was just gone, he told Mint Press. Huff is also the director of uh, Project Censored, an organization that sponsored the event. So no, no reason behind this. Uh, but he just, he just, they just took it off and they threatened to do this to my channel too. Uh, when Spotify or not Spotify, CD baby, you know, that distributes my comedy albums, um, uh, they got a copyright claim, uh, and it was my material from my channel and they were, they were like, Oh, you know, you can dispute the claim. So I disputed the claim and they said, oh, by the way, now that you've disputed the claim, if it's not cleared up within 30 days, uh, YouTube has the right to delete your channel. They just have the right to delete your channel. Uh, and so it took me a little while to get a hold. Like I couldn't get a hold of anybody at YouTube. I talked about this on Ron Cone show, but I couldn't get a hold of anybody on YouTube. Uh, but I did get a hold of somebody at CD Baby and then they were finally able to fix the problem. Because even they didn't really understand what the fuck was going on. And now look right here. There's there's an example of it, you know, where where it's uh, the no reason, no warning, no, no nothing. They didn't have any sort of copyright violations going on in their sites. And they just took down the whole fucking conference. So the organizer, uh, his name is Nolan Higdon. Uh, he talks about how they specifically ensured that there was no copyright infringement, that they weren't using other people's videos and content and so on and so forth. So there was no reason for them to actually do this. And because they took down the entire channel with no warning, he believes that the conference itself was targeted. And, I mean, evidence points to it. There's no warning. They didn't do anything wrong. They just literally talked about how it's dangerous for YouTube to control the First Amendment and the consequences of deplatforming people and the consequences of censorship, where the left celebrates when when you know people like Alex Jones and and Trump are taken off of these platforms. But what happens when they flip over and they go, "Well, so are people on the left. They're also anti-establishment." And they're also dangerous because let's say it's talking about the Black Panthers. They go, oh, but the Black Panthers are violent. Oh, he's spreading violence. And they deplatform you. That's very dangerous. And for talking about that, they got they, they, they their whole thing got erased. So where is that here? Uh ba -ba 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 -ba. So YouTube, like I mentioned, has nobody. 
Um, and so they they talked to uh, Mint Press got to talk to some representatives. And here was they say Mint, Mint Press spoke to representatives from Google, YouTube's parent company, who strenuously denied that they would ever remove content from their platform purely because it was critical of the company, noting that there is a wealth of videos on the website that challenge or attack them. After looking into the matter, Google said they could uh, find only one video and reinstated it, although the video does not appear on the conference's channel. Uh, as for the hours of other footage, that remains an enigma to them with no record of its existence. Thus, it appears that there will be no closure or definitive answer to this mystery. So they basically said, well, we don't know what the fuck happened. Oh, the algorithms. Those algorithms are nuts. You guys ever you guys ever hang out with an algorithm? Oh, man, some of them are way too racist. But that's what we put in charge. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Uh, we put up one of the videos, and it's not even in the right place. But it's all cool because we would never do something like this. We are open to criticism that we actively fucking ignore. Now, the reality is that tech companies should not have this kind of power, right? Uh, tech companies should not be in charge of, um, of, of dealing with the First Amendment. And, and here's, what, here's, here's the paragraph from Mickey Huff talking about that. On one hand, I understand they have the right to deplatform. Uh, on a broader level, though, I don't think they should have achieved this kind of power over our communication systems in the first place. And this, these should be publicly run platforms regulated in the same way our re government regulates and enforces the First Amendment. So unless you're calling uh, for direct violence, then I, there's no reason for you to take that down. So if the academic conference wasn't calling for direct violence on a specific thing, then there is no reason for them to take that down, and they took it down illegally. And 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 they don't have to, you know, pay any consequences for it because oh, they're a private company and they have the right to take down whatever they want. This was something I pointed out uh, when Graham Elwood's video was mysteriously taken down at the uh, beginning of the pandemic. I pointed out that YouTube put out a little claim, a little disclaimer at the top of their thing that said um, we have the right to revoke and remove any video or any channel um, because right now there's no people. It's all algorithm based and that algorithm will determine what gets to stay on our platform and what doesn't. Uh, and uh, we're not going to be reviewing any cases because, you know, staff. Uh, and it's like, you're one of the biggest fucking country, uh, tech platforms in the world and you're telling me that you don't know how to set up a remote workstation, hire a couple uh, a hundred people, pay them like 15 to 20 bucks an hour, work from home to essentially take care of a bunch of these disputes. Really? You make billions of fucking dollars and you can't figure that shit out? Aren't fucking tech companies and conservatives going on and on about how they're job creators and how this is the future? And you can't fucking hire people to look through specific claims where people, especially at a time when we have record unemployment, you don't think people would take that job to look at YouTube channels and go, OK, yes, this violates community standards here. This person is specifically calling violence. This person is specifically doing X, Y, Z. He is harassing this this content creator and this video should be taken down or at least demonetized or so on and so forth you don't think that there there you could do something like that of course they leave it to the algorithms because then the liability isn't on them it's on their proprietary software and they go oh it's programmed to look for xyz and you said xyz that's why we have to cut your stream that's why we have to take down your video uh Here's some lefty outlets. They they talk about this it, since 2016. Uh, lefty outlets uh, have um, lost traffic anywhere from 15 to 50 percent. So they've lost half. Like some of these sites have lost half their fucking traffic on their sites on Facebook and YouTube specifically. Facebook also deranked Mother Jones. Uh, because they were too left for Facebook. There's a 2016 uh, study that that came out that basically showed um, that 
uh, a lot of Americans, especially younger Americans, can't differentiate between sponsored content and actual news journalism. And that's done on purpose, right? Because these sites, they put up these sponsored content to look like news sites, and they put out and they prop up certain perspectives, certain points of view. Uh, and and this is why critical liter critical media literacy is important. You should learn how to be able to differentiate between what is a news source and what is sponsored content, what is propaganda, and what's actually journalism. How corporations are involved with entities like NPR and CNN and MSNBC and Fox News and all of these other sites, The Guardian, and so on and so forth. But it's done on purpose because these corporations, uh, these these tech corporations, are connected with some major political organizations, major intelligence agencies. Right? Uh, Eric Schmidt, one of the Google executives, said that the, the tech is going to become like the new war profiteers. Right? They're going to be able to make more money than anybody else. Like he wants Google to be the next Lockheed Martin. Nobody should want to be the next Lockheed Martin. That should like nobody. Nobody should grow up and be like, you know what I want to do? Develop weapons that murder people on a scale beyond anything we've ever imagined. That's what I want to do. Nobody should be comparing themselves to that shit. That's sociopathic. That's fu psychopathic fucking behavior. Not only that, but Facebook and Reddit are both run uh, by pro NATO Atlantic Council. Uh, that help them curate content. So they help figure out what content needs to be boosted and what doesn't. Why? It's a people run site. And if you if you are 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 using an ad model, right, where people purchase uh, the capability to run ads to target specific people, then why do you need money from the Atlantic Council to curate content on your on your platform? Unless you have an agenda behind it. And your and your platform is specifically propping up uh, a, an agenda. Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle all have CIA contracts. We knew that with Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos will take CIA contracts. We knew that the Ring, uh, the the Ring doorbell, uh, sends information to law enforcement agencies. So they they can tap into the Ring doorbells and and watch your neighborhood. That was revealed in the Blue Leaks over the summer. The Atlantic Council that Facebook and Reddit uses, they have connections to former CIA operatives and former military. They have uh, multiple CIA chiefs and multiple U.S. Army generals. Uh, and those are the people that are making decisions for big tech. They make Facebook and Reddit into state-sponsored proxies. This is the definition of sellouts, you guys. This is exactly... They sold themselves out. That's what these companies did. They sold themselves out to tech companies. They basically silence... Uh, anti -Ameri any any network that's critical of America. I don't like using the term anti-American. Uh, I, 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 I kind of feel like that's an inaccurate descriptor uh, because I look at this as like, I'm for the people and I'm for the American people. I'm also for the people of the world. So I don't think I'm anti-American in that sense. I am critical of the country of America. I am critical of the government structure in America. And so are networks like RT and Telesur, who talk about things like, oh, how Venezuela should be in charge of their own elections. And America can't just be like, we think this guy should be president. And this is, this is why. That's critical of America. And you should be allowed to do that. But because some of these big tech corporations are connected with the intelligence agencies and uh, pro NATO councils like the Atlantic council who has former intelligence agency members and military members as part of their board. 
they become a proxy to it and they they censor anybody that doesn't have uh doesn't doesn't speak but you know within this line and this line So here's the the final statement from from Mickey Huff in the in the article. Uh, he says there are layers of irony here that are not certain that are certainly not lost on us. But I don't know uh, if the public at large is realizing the attack that is happening against the very people that are the intellectual bulwark against such institutional censorship. I'm not trying to make uh, us out to be martyrs here, but my point is that I think it has to be. A particular irony when the very public intellectuals who try to educate the public about these about how these systems work are silenced. And that's exactly what's going on. The people that are trying to tell you, hey, there is there is corporate censorship from big tech companies that have allegiances, that have connections to the intelligence agencies that have allegiances to war profiteers and the government, and they are censoring certain voices. That's a problem. And the general public needs to be aware of this. And the general public needs to call out and say, fuck that shit. Because fuck that shit. <laughs> Let's look at some of your comments. Todd, uh, thank you for hanging out, Todd. If you haven't done so already, check out Dr. Martin Davidson Leveraging Difference. I will have to check that out. I don't think I've checked that out yet. Thank you for, this, thank you for the, the, the suggestion. Uh, the algorithm is created by humans. The algorithm is coded with all the biases of, uh, of the humans that wrote and managed the code. Absolutely, 100%. So for them to use the algorithms as an excuse in all this, is is a bunch of bullshit, uh, and it's just them trying to cover their tracks, right? Uh, that's that's really all they're doing. Like you guys wrote the algorithm, you guys know exactly what biases uh, you're looking for, and uh, you're you, that then they're fucking responsible for it. And but they don't want to take responsibility for it because now if let's say let's say that this uh, conference decides to take legal action against YouTube, they could potentially lose millions of dollars. For losing over 24 hours of video content that was being used by colleges as a educational um, uh, touchstone, and now they're not able to do that, and it's potentially also a loss of income for them, because let's say that these these professors were like, "Man, this is really great," and even some students were like, "This is really great. I'm going to donate some money to this." So the next year they can do this again and and educate you know the next you know keep up with all this stuff. Now that you know you you prevented them from doing that. Let's look at some oop, Rockfin comments here. Uh oh, sorry, I had to scroll back up. Uh, Google and YouTube are CIA. Yes, they do have connections to the um, to to the CIA as well. I mean, that's that's why. How could you not trust them? Any anything that goes against CIA talking points, CIA narratives. That's why Assange videos get censored so much. Um, all public utility has been privatized. The problem is they don't want real working people to look into censorship. Yeah, and they want you to champion. You know, when oh, this belief system that you don't like got censored yay who cares Our, th this is why you need to learn critical thinking so you can look at something that you disagree with and go yeah i still disagree with it all the points you made up i can debunk because i have the intellectual capacity to to do that that's what you should that's what they should be encouraging but they're not uh 40 minutes i've been watching and just realized chris is live <laughs> uh yes uh thank you fred thank you for tuning in uh, Devo as is Krish short for Krishna, uh, God of love and compassion. It's actually short for Ramakrishnan, uh, which is two different incarnations of Vishnu. Uh, and those are two gods uh, I will very likely not live up to because they both have killed demons. Uh, and I uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. 
Uh, Chris, what conference? William Williams asking what conference got banned from YouTube? It is. I will pull up the name of it. Do, 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 do. It is the Critical Media Literacy Conference of the Americas 2020. Uh, that's what it's called. Let me copy and paste that into the comments so that you guys can check that out. Boom. Posted. Or should be posted soon. There it is. Uh, yeah, so that's the conference that got censored. And, you know, again, more people need to, to learn about this stuff. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content you can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.